Yeah, you know, or in the bed or about to go to bed. And this is for those who like staying up late, playing Xbox till their eyes fall out. Or watching a movie like myself, or best like that. You know, when I look at this, I you know what I said, and I meant what I said. Anytime you bring your kids over, I'll treat them as those of my own. Probably say that much. That's from a dad. Knows better. Okay, the way squared away here. <clears throat> a dog is important, stressing the fundamentals of education. It's important for kids to stay in school everywhere and not drop out at the last minute. Don't drop out. You're almost there. If you didn't want it bad enough, you wouldn't be trying so hard day and night to stay in school. Trust me, I know how it feels. I died with one son who lives out of state. I mean, a psychology degree, and I know how it is can be with five kids. I mean, I can imagine what it's like having five kids. <laughs> or, let's see here. Da Dear Prince Charles, let's see how uh -huh. uh -huh. A proud politically kangaroo guy, Earl's coat was known then despite her Saint Trinian style carrying on introduction. Miss Redhead. She landed her first steady job with Durden Smith Communications. Let's see, I got her attention blushing as usual. She was a complete contrast to the twelve grand applicants. Let me know if you need a butler to come over. I want someone and do something that a nice play helicopter of yours. Maybe even ground it. Maybe even put some fertilizer. It'll grow some roots like a regular bush or tree. To stay here a while or longer, just to figure out this bathroom. Yeah. Oh, hey, Pappy, I'll go get you a Scotty from Star Trek. I'm sure he can figure out how to take your plan apart and figure out ways to for you to stay here a little longer while on vacation. God bless him, an old Star Trek fan. This upper market public. Mm -mm. She was a complete contrast to other well groomed applicants, but she was so keen when we took on a Neil Durden Smith. We drew the line of her doing blouse up with a safety pin that goes for the rest of you royal family when you come over. I'm sure I'll have bigger ways to get to a plane to carry another bird. Plane don't fly for a couple of days. She didn't really care what she looked like. And yet, when she did get it together, she was stunning, said Christina. No one who became Sarah's friend, although she was several years older. Even though she was a big, built girl, she would look straggling, straggling when she dressed up a pot. One of Sarah's personal trend marks made it first appearance. She would put her hair in a big black bow, said Christina. She looked really so great that boss Neil Jordan Smith was serving the husband of a Judith Thomas. The television presenter and his accounts and two beams of a trapped house boarding and guard. The royal jury, she rose from her six. Take it care of your assistant to Peter Gunner, one of the senior account executives. She adored the work with involving carrying the corporate message of her client to as many people as she would could as a receptionist presentation. She made friends. With television celebrities, Sue Lolly, Angela Rippon, Cliff and Michael, and David Jacobson was on for our office. And the staff liked to enjoy themselves in the last formal setting of local wine bars and baskets. We used to go to the Basil Street wine bar next door. That was our drinking hut. The club Christina Sarah liked to drink wine by the bus. I can't remember. <clears throat> Let me see here. Say the street line by me, so Regina Hunt. I can't remember that, but if it was white or red, I don't think she cared as long as it was wine for food. 
We use the stop clock. We lived in high Nicholas and sometimes stopped at H. A. Rod. We were all members of the pair club in the Basil's Field. It was four ladies only, and you could leave your shop in there. It got its name because one of the waiters, our old doorman, had a pet parrot, and every time one of these frightfully grand old ladies walked past it, would say, Go on, give us a dip. We used to pop in there. The office was expanding it was typical Sarah that she recommended Charlotte Eaton a swallow dance from Secretary of College for her job. Claire Johnson, daughter of the BBC radio cricket commentary, Brian Johnson was also one of the bright young things on the staff as Christian Christina Pooley. Anyone who was anyone was there. My dear was a fantastic atmosphere. Once a month we would have but up this crossing and crossing in Nell's office and go through who was doing what to discuss any good ideas we would come up with. I used to make sure all the girls were in our talks. Some of them would come in late after being on the tooth that night before. Sarah was very good. She would come in on time. She didn't gossip and she would never really complain her cousin. She, she would come in to me and thank God I needed that. Need a punch kick. I'm bloody fed up, but she rarely let anything get her down. One thing that annoyed some of the other girls in the office was the number of personal calls they received from friends eager to arrange rusters night out of our skiing trip. She was politely ticked off and the call stopped. Some of them were from Lady Diane Spencer, whom Sarah had been bumping to regularly when she motored down to Polo in her house. Would be a DW weekend. They first at Susie and Hector's home near Codger Park after a polo match. Charles and Donna dropped in. Sarah was visiting. The two young women started talking. The friends had, friendship had developed from there. From there, Donna, who was 19 and worked at a kindergarten, fell on the phone, wanted to talk about her non too smooth relationship with Prince Charles and Sarah. She found a confident would listen patiently to her father. Things Giving her the benefit of her eyes, the young woman would meet for shopping and expeditions, the hour needs to discuss taxes for them. The biggest catch in the realm ever or top of the camp scene. That girl that girl talks and not as great as the day it came close, confirmed them as the most influential friend Sarah ever made her intervention in Sarah's life and only just begun. Sarah thrived on her experience at Jordan Smith's communication, but Pierre was cut for Business beneath its transparent generality, and she learned some important lessons. Ken Smith Beamons had moved to Berger to work in ski store, and when Durden Smith told her he was selling his company, Sarah decided it was time to move on. She was already planning to spend Christmas with her mother in South America, and when Sarah asked her, Char Charlotte jumped in at the chance to join the the back grand tour. The two friends spent hours pouring over maps to plot those most interesting. And and Chiefs routed, they set off the arm in 1980. After Ronald Sue hosted a cocktail party. At the Berkeley Hotel to celebrate Sarah's 20th, 21st birthday, champagne glasses, clinked on a guest drink a toast to Sarah and wished her a happy birthday bomb boy. She cried tears of sadness, leaving her workmates behind, but the exciting prospects ahead filled her. With a joy she not bother to contain. Travel and distance meant freedom. Her philosophy had taken life. If it came making the most, it was already firmly ingrained. El Porcura now existed in more than name, name alone. Susie and Hector cleared some of the land planted sapling, which were growing fast. The rich saw we worked like mules. Susie recalled it was real fat for the lame course. Prefabricated wooden chalet had been built as a full one of the grand round house that would one day stand there and stand and child and Sarah called her friend enjoyed a traditional English Christmas dinner there was all the trimming despite the vast distance from home. In fact, the only link with outside work was a hot point of the festival season with a radio phone call from drummer down the farm say that Sue had given her the first daughter. How she ate. She asked her to be gone. As the new one got underway, the girl showed her their rucksacks and headed north by the bus, sleeping during living on the birds of pre topless 
For free thought of the road faculty that belongs here at the top of the RNG Square, that's just in the quality and good health. Here they marvel at the August wall and the most spectacular thoughts of Southern and up top. Rio de Janeiro, the roads were bumpy and the buses were old. In short, we shared our journey with farmers and chickens roughly here with very little money. We stayed here for a day and then these buses traveling thousands of miles out in the end of change our clothes. Outside Rio, the girls looked almost dirty there than we ran out. Money in the middle of nowhere. Shot recall, we simply sat there on our bags, sleeping and waiting for the next bus to come along. I wouldn't do it today. It's far too dangerous. Thankfully, in Rio, the girls were in the hot bath. Clean, clothes, and comfortable beds at the home of the friends of the Ferguson family. Couple of cabana of the Golden Beach of his. The Golden Beach of Balsa and Nova fame lost some of its lure when they saw that the city was crippling poverty. Homeless urchins had turned to drugs and crime roamed the streets on top. One step ahead of the score to hunt them for a bounty. They were glad to fly out Rio for the United States where they were to take. They took a ground bus ride to the ski resort, followed by a little in Lake Tahoe. The Rockets, after working in shit miners, and their family shot on the city of Minas Terrell. And Shara flew to the floor to meet up against the Susie Knight, who was in a great demand. As a player at the Palm Beach Polo Club, Sarah was in considerable favor with the ski man, which had damaged an ankle and she needed a rest. As far as the girls journeyed to New Orleans to hear the jazz along Bourbon Street, and the French Quarter hobbling along Sarah, and it was time to go home. She had been away since not only was she missing her father, who listened to some demonstration when she read with her adventures, but she was also missing out with these royal events. Perhaps the Lee Youngs. On the 5th of February 1981, Prince Charles had formally proposed to Lady Diana Spencer and his blue. Sitting room at Buckingham Palace 19 days later, their engagement was announced. Diana and her powerful mother was the Prince of Wales. <clears throat> Carrying on, y'all. As I reviewed what was last week's stuff. Gone with the wind. I'm not a person to obey meekly, Sarah Ferguson. The moment Miss Sarah Ferguson and Lavender Gods London SW11 took her place for lunch in the state dining room at Windsor Castle and next to Prince and Andrew under the Richard Eye of Prince of Wales. A chain of events began to unfold that ultimately rocked the house of Windsor to its foundation. Andrew had concluded from his many enormous experiences with women that he was the kind of man who had to fall desperately and helplessly in love. If his initial infatuation were to lead to a lifelong commitment. It is going to come like a lightning bolt, and you're going to know it's there, and then you explain. Everything comes into place, and then there's a channel that opened up. Nothing uh, as elemental as that happened to the prince that day, 20 June 1985, after the Queen's guest had taken drinks in the green drawing room, fell in it, into a lunch, and her ass cut fires. Minutes the house to each year with one of them was required to wear what did happen for the meal. Had been completed and the royal party has Carissa in place had adjourned for the open carriage. First procession to the grapes course was that he and Sarah started a long process of identifying how compatible they might be. A channel had opened up as far as Andrew was concerned. Sarah put his part in his life until they had been confined to walk on a roll in various little cameras. Cameos, which even taken to that point only a tiny segment of the big royal picture in which she was started at the point. She might have been present on these occasions, but she was never the one. This was the true Smith Lawn on her tomboy days. It was there on standing ground where Sarah had been invited, but no one's friend in particular. The nearest they had got to any sort of physical contact was at a house party at the Four Castles, the 120 rooms cottage home of Andrew's friends. The Duke and Duchess of Roxburgh went blindfolded for a game of hide and seek. She had been found crouching under a table. 
and pinched his palm. He saw her. <clears throat> saw her clearing the path, perhaps for the first time, through the lens of his viewfinder. When he asked her to pose outside the Vanderbilt Design Castle for photographs, he was taken for his pie place. He discovered that he shot from certain angles. She was only a photogenic. She was beautiful. There was also a humble beginning. It's about to start somewhere. Said Andrew, when Sarah was wearing 25,000 Rivian diamond earrings. Bringing in, he had changed his mind about his life on altering thunderbolts. We were made to sit next door to each other at lunch, yes, said Sarah. And he made me eat chocolate and put perfect rolls, which I didn't want to eat at all. I was on dime. Poor Andrew Roy Asuka had been a very welcome interlude between her naval career at Portland. Though it sat in his, in his first official tour of Canada as the modern son, foremost, he was still to enjoy his few days off. He told Sarah that he fancied some of the rich chocolate pudding. That he would uh, come first. Sarah obviously finished off her portion only to find that Sarah had been choking. He would not touch even her spoonful. Sarah did the only reasonable thing. She whacked him on the shoulder. I didn't have to have to, so I got hit, he said. It started from there. Andrews, little Jape and Ben, his rather clumsy way of flirting with Sarah to see if they were on the same wavelength. They were too. So sure, he had meant no harm. He put his, his arm around the jack of her king silk suit. She laughed and they sat off for a splendid day at the race. The couple were photographed in the raw enclosures, which until recent times had been a no go area for divorce, like a mother and father, and for as willing as ever to link Andrew's name with any new girl on his arm. Printed the pictures, but the cost nothing in mind. Probably that she was not a usual pinup bird. We could have found Prince Porfirio and Diana sitting with him in the wild box. I already realized something about Sarah and Andrew that they never saw themselves after their experiences of love and marriage amongst their parents struck as a child with their very as a young woman. Sarah had 25 desperately wanted to settle down with a man who loved her. For herself, the affair was maybe although lingering in her life, she was heading toward. It's final pit stop. Andrew, more mature after Falcon's War, but still searching for self graduation in arms of beautiful young lovers, was fast reaching the point of departure between his liberty and his past and more responsible future. It was dying at her antenna tuned to the social policy surrounding her, who read the signs for them as surely as any matchmaker. She decided that not only were they ready for marriage, they were ready for each other. This meant changing the royal family attitude towards Sarah, who, like so many of the young women, had grown up on the fringe of the world, was still regarded as a first-rate reserve, but now a first choice, never the one. It was a slow process in the weeks that followed royal Ascot Diane made the point to the Queen and Prince Charles that Sarah had been invited to Windsor Castle as a single woman in her own right. She was queen especially with was receptive, whose doctor had been unsuccessful to her, and Angie's fleet with Vicky Hodge had shown beyond any doubt that he was the exception to the wilds of such an excitement adventure that four needed looking at. What Sarah's pedigree might lack in some visceral ways was just about balanced by her single minded attitude to Sadella. If she could make Randy and Andy tear up his little black book for four months and turn towards family life instead, the queen would not stand in her way. Sarah made her interest in spouse life at the same time started to go unnerving away from the royal who had until then felt an intriguing necessary role. The world Prince Charles came to speak the royal soap of Prince Michael Kent, the beautiful and somewhat mysterious divorcee who had married the queen's cousin, Prince Michael, and rather than spot of her new son is letter, despite the main irritation of being labeled Princess Pushy, she gave great value. Unfortunately, detail and extraordinary friendship she was con conducting with war hunt divorcing a millionaire from Dallas, Texas, where it leaked the news of the world. David Monk, in the papers, told an underprint editor, discussed the story with his, his property, a rubber mart, as the two men stood on the balcony and murdered out penthouse over the green park when the masculine Sunday push published chapter and verse. <clears throat> Birds on the affair, Prince Michael was forced to curve 
Watch over natural exuberance and return to Kensington Palace as a devoted wife and mother was deliberately put out by someone with palace connections. This is disgrace. Princess Michael and Montgomery, they worked the tree. She was completely subdued by the revelation that she never raised her blonde locks since. She was originally disappeared in the oblivion since that episode. <clears throat> a vacancy that was created by enduring outrage and nearly headlined as the press did not have far to look not long for suitable other brothers to start speaking her lines. The audition had lasted most of Sarah's life to Andrew. Diane suggested that he should listen to his heart and allow his true feelings to merge. Andrew who had seen the girl he had kissed under the mistletoe. Turned into one of his staunchest friends, took careful note of her about then he jetted off. Kenneth where he engaged in some more flirting, probing once again, then taking the matter. The royal family was no less a means of temptation than anyone else. Temptation than anyone else. For that reason alone, to submit to the renewed cries of let Delaney upon the mansion of Monarch it was inadvisable, it would unavoidably eliminate some of the dark components. Andrew, paternal grandfather, Prince Andrew of Greece, finished his days exiled in Monte Carlo, where he took mistresses to drink and played the tables. He died penniless. Royal circles are not protected from care to the effects he never has been. To the highly placed royal source, the late Duke of Kent was a drug addict, no homosexual, I mean, no handsome young man, was stable unless the Duke was completely stoned out of his mind and couldn't perform. All of Andrew's great uncles on his mother's side the sons of George VIII, indefensible Queen Mary suffered from one problem or another. George, the Duke of Kent, was richly a traitor for his cocaine addiction. My father, three children, Henry Duke of Coakley, Wilkesbury, however, was an alcohol, though set on to be Governor General of Australia. Well, it was imagined his guilty as conduct would go unheed. Prince John, the young and somewhat athletic, who lived most of his short life in the cottage of the Sandy and Grammy estate. Care for a nurse, he died again. Died at age 14, virtually unmourned. David, the eldest son, he became Edward. <coughs> The twelfth and then the thirteenth was a addicted to adulterous relationship. She was the love of Edward with other men wives. When he got addicted to the throne to marry his bride, Wally, while Simpson was a divorcee who had perfected the art of making his Shanghai brothers. Brock of the Queen's own father, Bertie, was the King George, was addicted to the cigarette, which killed him. Cigarette burns up a kid. Which killed him at the red of the early age of 56. He also endured a crippling summer, which he had fought all his life to conquer. Aunt Andrews and Prince Margaret was a heavy drinker who had been treated that Henry the 15th alcoholic hepatitis like far she was strongly addicted to nicotine at her best. She was gracious and relaxed at her most insufferable. She visited the most of friends and admired them. Whiskey and malware water for three and a half hours. Said a lady of letters, she used my lighter to light cigarettes one over another. The poor fellow, she insisted upon making me feel very uncomfortable. We all had to stand every time she went to the loo, and no one could ever leave until they decided, decided to go home. Once she departed, the tension that we drunk a bit of was so unbearable that the hostess husband, who had drunk very well, became absolutely paralyzed in a matter of minutes. The point I'm making that it is in my conception to think of a royal circle as being non essential or as being protected from lies and respected as a high place royal source. They're just not okay, so say I had freedom. That Diana only glimpsed in comparison, but let's not forget that Diana had a very free life from the age of 15 to 19. She was living in her own flat in London, going away practically every weekend with her girlfriends and boyfriends. She wasn't quite as protected as people think. She got a glimpse of it herself. When Dandy returned from his week through New Farms and Nova Scotia, no terror, he sent flowers and a note to stay home. She accepted an invitation to the bar at Colin Gall and visited Bachelor Court of Bonham Palace for dinner. Wisely, she kept it quiet about the moves. Andrew was making her direction the first war at the beginning of Royal Mermaid. It's safe. 
To say anything go on stress that has trans tennis friends seen happen and suddenly girls who are open about their both and suddenly climb up the serious volatile and address the men. It was from a position of some sex that Sarah joined Patty and Ellie for a holiday at the development of Michael Pierce and maybe some of the babies that were enjoying his summer hospitality as well as they know that Sarah was no longer under McNeely's spell. Her bikini bottom fell off during a hot dive in the pool. McNeely laughed out loud. Sarah scolded him in no uncertain terms. She rode a bicycle around the pool. It got out of control and she crashed into the pool. McNeely did not laugh when I guess camera. Still wearing a pan and a my hat and polka dot sun dress nuzzled up to McNeely. When she left in busy hours, she was far more liberated than she had been at any time in the past three years. Back at work, Sarah carried on as though nothing usual was taking place in her life. She was working on her most challenging project for Richard Burton so far, a book on that place of Lynn Westminster, which was being written by Sir Robert to a former conservative MB who was dedicated to the history of Manchester College Park. She kept in touch with her father's friend, Brian Morse, whose nonsense East End approach to life endured him to her. I took her out to dinner a few times after she had broken up with Patty McNeely, said Morse, and one particular night was dying in Michael Pro's old Italian restaurant near how she mentioned to me that she wanted to settle down with a nice young man. She'd run around for years. She wanted a man's stable future. There was other invitations from Andrew, notably to Flora's Castle scene at the Royal Bottom Pension, Jane Rossett, by the sisters of the Duke of Westminster, whose 335 million for fortune made him the wealthiest man in Britain, and already played a host in some other Andrew's loves, who stopped as Christmas approached. Sarah Blue and BMW now sporting the now and Broadway Pink. A gift from Prince Andrew testified to her nocturnal lifestyle was to be parked inside the gates of Buckingham Palace. Andrew gave her another more significant present. <clears throat> a Russian wedding ring and three cores of 24 karat gold. Pretty vision of Bill Moss clothes. And their abuse to indicate they were spoken for. Off came the many rings she nearly wore and on when Andrew's pleasure was. Sarah spent Christmas with Ronald Sue and the children of Tom and by Christmas. I knew she was very happy and soon she came home probably grown and happy. Sue had much been disappointed sending off the invitation to nearly fine. If I so much as open my mouth, the next time shall be cast as a wicked stepmother. Ronald, who normally talked open to the press, would only say that speculation about the game it was premature. The Queen invited Sarah to join her family for the traditional New Year's break. At Sandy Graham, not as first as a bird, but as Andrew Barry. Particular girlfriend mortars along the public lanes, which crisscrossed the Norfolk estate, with that eye to catch a glimpse of Andrew's shotgun slung under his arm. After one pleasant shooting shortly behind him, with Sarah, who was decked out of country, a barber jet, wore a trim hat, and green well. Having seen her plans proceed so smoothly so far, Diana decided in waiting. She had grown skillful in manipulating public speaking through the press, hearing her rumors for child. Now she gave Sarah the benefit of that experience, plus some fashion advice she learned in the hallway. No one could forget. <coughs> the see through skirt that Diana was obviously the camera of vulgarism had worn to work one day, nor the noticeably lower the hem of the royal blue engagement. Which Andrew's agreement she invited Sarah to join her. And Prince William on a visit to HMS Brosnan, which was more in the pool than prior to taking part in nature exercise out of North Sea. Andrew escorted the trio around the 3,500 ton frigate, showed them his helicopter, much to William's delight. Maybe with delight, but failed to kiss Sarah goodbye. Must she ever want to disappoint once, then twice, shot. Sounds familiar. Still, Diane had made her point, thanks to her influence, really looked the part in smart black, black coat dress, worn over white, sh white shirt, red pussycat bottle, gold and grips earrings from a butler and Wilson culture, but flat and court shoes. Her usually back combed hair had been carpeted, Mitch Michael John, she had taken particular care with her makeup. 
She looked pulled and elegant. The rest rang out, wasn't it? There I had removed. That was as prevent anyone going over for, further in their speculation. By now, the queen, queen and Prince Charles were convinced that peril was won, and Prince Philip was referring to persuasion. Diane got on well with her father-in-law. There was that girl missing much money chance to meet Charles and Diane on another trip, which provided good for the publicity for the skiing holiday posters. The party included nature's usual minister. The Queen's Equator and Jane Guy Larber, Sarah Guy posted in similar pink sky, sky suits, shared a fair white headband, giggle head a lot, and Sarah showed her athletics good by racing Charles down the highly changing flat track, running the guy and striking the nursing club. But in other ways, she was a fast learner, very cleverly. The Princess of Wales was taking the first step. Ron Corsair would eventually give her position a great power to fight out the winter. Only twenty to four shots of our Charles was not only one by high to two, but two, which guaranteed her secure role as a wife and mother. However, <clears throat> Much she and Charles drifted apart. In some royal circles, she was referred to not as the Princess of Wales, but, but as the mother of future King William, the King Mother. She had seen Queen Mother in action as a royal martyr, very much special head of the family her husband, Bertie George, a shy man with a nervous stand, but had never wanted to grow. But it was the Queen Mother when Duchess of the York was praying and that his you was with his grand. She had learned a great deal from her mother and our Queen Mary, who manipulated her husband George so successfully that his subjects regarded him as a great wise monarch. Mary's mother in law, Queen Alexandra, was another inspiration for Diane. Strikingly beautiful woman, she maintained a gracious air of quiet calm. While all around her knew the king that Edward was seeing other women. With Sarah safely tucked up her Charlotte Andrew and dogs. Some more flirtatious flirting before Bronze and Sarah knowing how to sign to her duty to keep everyone guessing here to took three sign girls to West End show, dining them in a restaurant and dancing in tramp. So she yes, she was very untouched because in their division the boss was secretary. He had time to complete the discreet but immensely. Ordered him to outside and was about to inside the room. It organized by the trial secretary possible without the extent of being known to the monarch. Friends of all author John Pop. They're going to give him a week and huh? And they got get it on with it. When George B. asked, who is it, the woman about Wild Princess Secretary did an enormous check on her car. The time of the world showed what she had been working in. The Shire and Brothers, Brothel, 1924-25, it remained competential after her death. Before our Prince Michael revealed it to the Queen, that her father, Baron von Ribbon, had an officer in his ancestors and in war to an uncomfortable fact which was unknown to then Mary Christian, which remained as well kept secret for years. Sarah had flown to assist him just before Christian Noir, Christopher Noir, permanently shot and drew her in his home. In Geneva, Geneva, she was actually aware of the damage God bless you all over there. That last photographs and the other myths into it of her life caused that it fell into her wrong hands. She did not know it, but then she was already too late. Sarah arrived back from Conquest to the near right most hotels of the network. And there were more outside her office in St. George Street when she went back to work from window high above Maddox Street. Around the corner, Terrence Bell watched her dash to her work with Cameron Bristol, a famous thief and infidel. Never met Sarah, but from her personal observation, he thought she handled him the situation brilliantly. It was stressed through. She lunched with her Sir Robert to discuss progress in his book. Cook was soldiering on a baby with his 
is worked despite the crippling effects of motor neuron disease from which it so Sarah cheered him up, although it just came when Barry came out, opened up in his direction as they left the restaurant. Bryson was in his den den for a night keeper when Andrew was surprised to receive an order to take his girl out. So when the hussy, as he called her, an airborne over the frigate, the captain ordered the royal stand broken out and strip of legs. Sailing happy birthday, H and R was run up. Jean got ribbon about it, although invited him and Sarah to visit his problem for his cats again this weekend. That weekend. Although Sarah had already accepted a pre prior invitation to stay with Brian Greta Merton at the home near Maiden Maidenhead. She knew, however, they would understand if she canceled. She rang up a few days before and said she had invited him to the house by a real fun. They recalled Morris. We learned subsequently that Prince Andrew was there. We were amongst the first to know they were getting married. Using the U.S. Miss and the Sarah Carter plane to Newcastle. Upon time, it was driven at 50 miles to Fort Castle on the banks of the Tweed near Kessel. Andrew had driven from HMS Brad in there. Freezing weather kept the couple indoors most of the time, but they did not manage to walk the dude. The dogs on the ground so far had turned the trees and the cocoa white and they chaffed in each other through the just throwing snowballs. The Rossum had played the couple in adjoining bedrooms with four poster beds. Around midnight, Andrew went down above news and asked Sarah to marry him. She accepted. When you wake up tomorrow morning, you can tell me if it's a huge joke, she told him. They toasted their breath on champagne. Andrew was not joking. He did not change his mind. Their peace of mind was shortly as the newspaper started. Danger in its own way, Nihilus was about to descend on Tiny Castle. On the headline, Andy Girl Uncle King has knew the world's splash allegations about the lifestyle of my reverend friend. Right across the front page on Sunday, 23rd of February, the story was based largely on an affidavit sworn by a Charlotte girl who had worked at McNeely's place and named the Castle McNeely responded immensely. Immediately, the informant a drug user worked for him for a few weeks, not too long before I started going out of the She, He said, adding, I sacked her for obvious reasons. He picked up the great damages of 35000 in the newspaper. After a lunch of money, Andrew dropped Sarah off at a Newcastle Air on his way back to Sunderland. And an unmarked police car was wanting to drive on straight to the terminal building to catch her return. Flight to get with plane miss. And well, got back to the Lavender Gardens. A much changed young woman, a winter in his wings. An official announcement that gave had to wait until Andrew got the Queen's consent to marry her after a majesty returned from a trip to Australia. Tri Australia with the Duke of Edinburgh, Sarah faced some ad word moments. Interviewing three weeks, I remember coming from South Africa, my marriage had fallen apart, and I called around to see the nest. The children in Dialoon, Fergie, who was our daughter, Annabelle Dama, who was there with I so I just slapped on the back and said, Hi, a house pet. That was met with daily silence. I hadn't heard about her in peace then. They brew and I would cause notice that Queen Jack was near the place in the outside, number four. They speculate the man sitting on a four hours and he might be proud to take on the trail. A philandering husband, a privacy brother, taking out the parents when they discovered that. That was, in fact, Prince Andrew. Body of that prince was sitting there. They were overjoying for her. That just leaked out. Carlos and the newsman joined the watch. Caroline Bretman Smith, who had known the romance ever since Prince Andrew started telephoning help Sarah to go out the press by acting as a decoy. I'm going to stop there. Sarah News. Mr. Ladies Red. Try that. Ten hours back. That's <laughs> enough time. I just spent helping all you viewers all over the world. And some of you thought you could beat my Xbox stay awake record. What? Some diehard friends are telling you, yeah, right. Good luck. He's got you. Commander Rogers. 
and her spirits rest forever. For somebody who wears a cross on his heart, the serious song we make to it. I thought I'd say hello to all of you, especially your royal family. God bless you. William, Harry, God knows I carry your mom on my keychain, on my son's car, and I look at that real hard, and I want to tell you that she's not far away, and she sits by your bedside at night, slept in the fall. We call her psychic. God, yeah, she stands not far away from me either. Bad news, I've done a lot for people around here. Reading about someone's life is one thing, regardless of what kind of experience he's dating was, or you know, you're talking to a guy who gets treated as a trophy and forgotten about no, just for being near his kid. I mean, I spent some, some serious years sacrificing time keeping people's morale going. That's an experience I share with all of you out there. Preventing suicide, getting people employed, you know, all out of heart. And, uh, and it takes a lot of character, a lot of integrity for somebody who knows he's needed. He needs to speak with weight day payments, hours, days, years, uh, no rain, dial up, just to connect with him. And, uh, and it's all about heart. And uh, when you get a chance, I don't know, hug Kate for me and little George. And uh, the newborn on the way. Watch y'all off and on. Good morning, America. Look for me on Xbox. We'll go another round. Thanks. All right, Stephen. I'm on there. Uh, I'm also on Facebook. But y'all know I text you several times. And I just got a message. And I uh, hope you got it. And God bless you all there. Especially Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth IV and so forth. And everybody else. Praying in the world. God bless my snubs. Watch your house. Oh, yeah, my song cuts. Yes, you do, little girl. God bless you. Uh, uh.